Coaching Soccer Weekly, episode 386, Using Manifestation to Solve Any Coaching Problem. Entertaining, educational, and inspiring soccer content to help make you a more effective coach, player, or soccer parent. Hello and welcome back to Coaching Soccer Weekly, presented by World Class Coaching. My name is Sega Rabinovich, and this is the podcast devoted to bringing you cutting-edge methods, techniques, and tactics for coaching soccer. It doesn't matter if you're an experienced coach who has been training teams for many years, or if you're new to coaching and working with the team for the very first time. There's something we can all do to take our coaching to the next level. Welcome back to the show. This past weekend was the long weekend, so there were no games for any of our teams. So as a result of that, it was a long weekend and everyone kind of had some time because this is the first week of school. So all our players start school today and then they've got training uh, later tonight. So um, we'll see how they are. We're going to try to do a lot more fun things. And I mean, our practices, I think, are always fun, but I'm going to try something new. So new year, new start. Um, On today's show... I have a lot to talk about. Um, <clears throat> I've been talking about something exciting that's happening uh, with the Gladiator Academy. So I can finally talk about it and I'll, and I'll talk about that today. And then I'm really excited to talk about the topic of manifestation because this is something that I've always thought was nonsense. Um, I didn't believe in any of that stuff, law of attraction, all this kind of meditation and those types of things but as you know I do a lot of research and I listen to audiobooks when I drive something that I love doing and a lot of the books that I listen to are most of them are business books at this point and then every once in a while I'll throw in a soccer book like I did with uh the Cruyff book that I uh listened to but What's really interesting uh, is kind of the logic behind it. And that's really what I want to talk about today and how to apply it to coaching. So if you looked at it and you were like, really, Segev, really, that's what you're going to be talking about today. Don't worry. (laughs) Um, Stick with me. I promise it'll be worth it. I really liked last week's episode and I know it was very controversial. Um, I got some messages and emails and in that stuff. But I think the most important thing was that it got you thinking about it. And that I think is the most important part of the podcast. And a lot of the times the way that I do that, you know, isn't by talking about something controversial. It's about talking, you know, about a new tactic or things like that, that gets you to think about it. But I think sometimes it's okay to talk about these controversial things. Um, and it just gets you to start thinking about things a little bit differently, um, and just challenging thought processes and, and and belief. And I think that's really important part of coaching to never be set in your ways and just kind of be open to everything around, because there are so many different types of styles, coaching styles and, uh, ways to play the game. So for me, I absolutely loved it and I loved the emails and and the DMs and all the conversations and and, and all that that I had. And I think uh, this week might be one of those too. So buckle up, um, especially if you're driving (laughs) Um, and let's get going. So I do want to start off by talking about this big announcement that, you know, that I've kind of built up, I think, Uh, and it actually starts next week. So I've actually partnered with an elite sports private school and the school itself is a normal private school. But what's special about it is that for an hour a day, students go to their specific sports specialty. So there's hockey, there's basketball, there's, I think, karate, um, there's volleyball, there's golf, uh, and then there's soccer. And we're going to be doing their soccer. So every day we're going to be going to this school except for Friday, so four days a week. 
we're going to be spending four days a week with the students who are specializing in soccer. And I think this is going to be a game changer for the academy because the players that are going into this school automatically automatically become gladiator players. So they're going to be training four days a week with us during the day, and then automatically they can play with us during the weekend. Now, what's amazing about this is that for a very long time, a, and I've spoken about kind of my position with Canada soccer, which is something else I want to talk about. Um, but I think the problem with youth soccer in general is that it's very restrictive. Um, there are too many restrictions, I think. And I understand why there have to be restrictions, but restrictions that diminish player opportunity, I think is a huge problem. If you have a tournament and it is not sanctioned by Ontario soccer, we are not allowed to play in it. If there is a team that calls us up and they are not part of Canada and Ontario soccer, we cannot play them. I have to simply say on the phone, sorry, I since you are not an accredited academy or club, we cannot play a friendly against you. Wish you the best of luck. And I have to hang up the phone. That is what I have to do. And we do that. And I think that's really restrictive. And I don't like that. I don't like excluding people from the game. Canada soccer... Ontario soccer, their mission is to grow the game. And by putting these types of restrictions, and there are so many other restrictions, it's hurting the ability for players to get to a specific level and, and to maximize their potential. We have leagues, we have a league called OPDL, which is just has ridiculous standards that don't matter. Um, and have gotten to the point where now youth soccer to play in the OPDL is about $5,000. It's a ridiculous amount because it's not the league fee, but if you want to be an OPDL club, you have to be training five days a week. You have to have your own facility. There are so many different things that bring the cost up that clubs simply have to charge players an insane amount of money so they can cover all their costs. And these clubs are non for profit too. So it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, what's great about the school is that the players go to school just like they would go to any other school. And as a result of that, they can play against anyone. There is no restriction because they are going to school and they are playing on the school team. That, just like every other player, that goes to another elementary school, another middle school, a high school. They can play on their school team and they can play on an academy or a club team as well. So our players that go to this school are now able to play against anyone. And if someone calls me up and says, you know, hey, Sega, you know, we have a team that wants to play a friendly. I can say, no, you cannot play against any of our gladiator teams, but I am associated with a private school. Let me talk and see if we can organize a game with them. And that's allowed, right? There's no conflict of interest. There is no nothing because those players that are going to the school during the day are not at all Ontario soccer, Canada soccer representatives. They're not, they're not a part of that. So it's a really great way to open up the development platform for players. Now, I'm really excited because for the first time, we have the ability to see players four days a week. And the ability to create a curriculum around that where we can really maximize player development. And when I went to Chelsea, one of the things that really impressed me wasn't just the soccer part of it. It was what they call the player care part. And the player care part is everything that isn't really associated with soccer. So uh, the mental health of the players, the physical health of the players, how the players are eating, nutrition, right? All those things have to do with the player care part, not the physical soccer part. They contribute to the success of the soccer player, 
but the expertise are independent of the soccer player, right? A nutritionist is not a soccer coach, right? Um, someone who works with mental health is not a soccer coach. So all this stuff is going to be available at the school. And now we can really talk about creating a holistic person, right? That is also a great soccer player. So I'm really excited about that. And as the year goes on and, you know, we get more accustomed to the schedule and the school and the players, I'll really start to talk about this and kind of how we're building this program because we're starting from zero. So building this program into what I hope will be the best program in the world. That is my goal, right? Because if you have the ability to train players four days a week, that's almost every day. They're also playing a game in on a Saturday on the weekend. That's five days a week of soccer, right? There is no reason why these players should not, at the end of the high school, uh, grade 12 senior age come out as some of the best players if you are coaching and developing them correctly so i'm super excited about this opportunity and for me this is kind of the next step because now we're going to get these elite athletes to come in into our teams that now we're both developing players in an academy setting and in a school setting and i think it's really just going to change the way that our academy is built and also allow us amazing opportunities around the world to partner with certain um, professional clubs and uh, certain tournaments that before we just weren't able to do and go as a private school with a private school team. And we've worked with other private schools. I've worked with, uh, you know, I think three different private schools at this point and we've coached their teams and it was fantastic. But it was only for a season, right? The soccer season here for schools is about a month long. So it's not really, you don't really get to work with players all year. So this will be the first time that we'll be able to work with players for a very long period of time. And I'm super excited for that. So that starts next week. Kids are picking their specialty this week, um, kind of getting used to the school as well. And then next week will be the start of all the sports programs there. For anyone that knows me, they know that I'm passionate about two things in life. One is soccer, and that's very obvious. But two is business, and that's something that I kind of sprinkle into the show every once in a while. But I am absolutely obsessed with business. I love it. I took business courses in university. It was my second major. Um, I also have a construction management degree, which is kind of the business side of construction. So for me, business is something that I absolutely love. And in the car, when I go to practices, games, and anytime I really get in the car, I listen to a lot of business audiobooks. I absolutely love it. And very early on, I heard about the law of attraction. And the law of attraction was, to me, something that didn't really make sense. You know, how is it that you can think about something that you want it and then just kind of imagine that you have it and then you end up getting it because it just comes to you? To me, that logic process made absolutely no sense. And I've listened to about... I would say 50 business books at this point and a handful of them continue to talk about it. I've also listened to the book. Um, I think it's called law of attraction. Um, and just kind of listen with the same thing, with the same way that I would go into a soccer conference, right? Open mind. You know, these are people that are successful. These are people that know what they're doing and just kind of open your mind to it. And with a lot of different examples, things kind of started to make sense. And for me, I'm a very logical person. So I need a way that logically something makes sense. If logically something doesn't make sense to me, I'm not going to do it. 
And I think a lot of people that know me because of that think that I'm very set in my ways. And I am. And I'm set in my ways until someone can prove to me using logic that something is better. And that's why until now, I've been doing 1v1s and rondos every practice. Because until now, I haven't found anything logically that works better to develop our players. So let's talk about this law of attraction. Now, the law of attraction for me, that name is, I think, a huge problem. So let's forget using those those words because I don't think that's going to help. <laughs> I want to give you a different example and an example that for me has really changed the way I think about how to do this and why I think using this process is the best way to really solve any problem that you have when it comes to coaching. Any problem. So one of my coaches got a new car recently. And um, what happens is he drives to my house, leaves his car there, and uh, then I take him to practice. So we're in the same car. And as soon as I saw his car, we started talking about it and all this and all that. And something really interesting happened. When we started driving, I started to point out all the other cars that were the exact same as his, just as we're driving, you know, oh, here's one in yellow, here's one in white, here's one in green, here's one in black, here's one in this and that and this and that. And the interesting thing is that these cars were always there, but I never noticed it. I never really noticed how popular that car was until it was something that I thought about. And to me, that is the best way to explain the law of attraction from a logical point of view. Let me give you another example, an example more soccer related, which I do. Last week, I spoke about building out of the back and I spoke about how we have to condense the team more, right? So that we can have more support when the wingers have the ball, right? And that's going to allow us to keep possession a lot more and keep the ball in the other team's half whenever we're in trouble. And the reason I was able to figure that out was because it was in the forefront of what I was thinking about. And I went in that weekend watching a Manchester City game with that simply in my mind. How are they building out of the back? How are they doing this? How are they keeping possession? How are they getting the ball to half and keeping the ball and not just losing it when they get to half? And it's the same thought process with the car, right? You start to think about the car more because you're talking about it. Suddenly you notice it everywhere. You start to think about building out of the back. You start to see it everywhere. And that to me is the start of how to solve any problem. Any problem that I've ever had, ever, 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 ever. All I did was I started to think about it and kept it at the front of my mind. And whenever I went into a situation, it would be front and center. So let's talk about the school. Now, as you know, I'm obsessed with 1v1s. I love it. I think it's probably one of the most important parts of player development. However, I've been struggling to figure out how to do that, but not overwork the kids in the way that we do it, which is just... Everyone on one field, put a ball down and play. And because it was always in my mind and I was always thinking about it, there was a moment where I don't know how or why, but I thought about something that Anson Dorrance did. And I think it came from the place where Anson Dorrance is running a very successful program at a school. So I thought, hey, 
let's go back. Let's just look at his book again, go through it and see what are the things that he does in his competitive, competitive cauldron that he does. So I looked into that and I found something that to me, it was three words and it was one V one verse sorry, 1v1 towards goal. And that instantly, because everything I was thinking about was that 1v1 really changed and gave me a new idea. So this law of attraction, this manifestation stuff, try and think about it in a different way. Don't think about, you know, energies and all that stuff. And if you believe in that, fantastic. But take a different approach, the approach of what's wrong with this. And what I mean by that is what's wrong with this in a soccer context, not what's wrong with what I'm saying. What's wrong with my team? What are we struggling with? Okay. Who is the best? And I mean the absolute best at this. Or who is someone that I respect that talks about this, right? For me, the possession Easy, Manchester City, right? And then take that, the struggle, go into that environment where your struggle is someone else's success and just watch and just watch with an open mind. And I guarantee you that will kickstart the problem solving for you. Guaranteed. As long as you do one thing and that is keep an open mind. If you go in there, with uh, skepticism, negativity, then it's not going to work. But the law of attraction to me, that manifestation, more the law of attraction, is that you're attracting something into your life because you're thinking about it. And because you're thinking about it, you're open to it. And if you're not open to it, that's a problem. So you have to be open to these ideas. And in order to be open to it, Again, these two things. Put yourself in that environment. Immerse yourself into that environment. And be ready for new ideas to come to you because they will, right? If you're open to something and you're smart, which you should be if you're listening to this podcast, right? It shows that you are open. It shows that you do care about your coaching education. And that's something that would really work. Now, Let's say there's something and you don't really know who to go for, right? You go, well, I want to work on my players 1v1 defending. I don't know anyone around that I can just kind of call up. And to that, I say, fantastic. No worries. I got you. Don't worry. Here's what you do. Think about the best player in history. Best player in history. That is good at what you want. 1v1 defending. Okay, for me, player that I respect, a player that I think is fantastic at it, the 1v1 that I would want, ideally my players to be good at defensively, Kyle Walker. Hands down. Say what you want. I want my defenders to be like Kyle Walker. Here's what you do. Super simple. YouTube, and you simply write in those keywords. 1v1 defending Kyle Walker. Simple as that. And you look up and that will start you on that journey if you are lost. And this is how, for me, I come up with my best ideas. The best ideas I've ever had have taken me about three to four hours and they've mostly been on YouTube and they've mostly gotten me down this huge rabbit hole that started in one place and ended up in a completely different place. So let's do that right now, right? We can start with that idea of one of you one defending Kyle Walker. I'd look it up. Suddenly what I notice is I actually notice that when he's doing his 1v1, he's tackling the player at a certain moment. So then I go into YouTube and I go, when to tackle in soccer, when to tackle the ball in soccer. And I go, no, I hate that. I don't like it. Okay. I don't like the way the words are. I don't like what's coming up. I need a better word for tackle. 
okay, maybe commit, right? So I would change that to commit. And now I'm starting a brand new search. It's a very specific subsection of 1v1 tackling. And you continue that process until you go for about three to four hours. And I guarantee you after those three to four hours, you will come out a completely different person. But again, as long as you do these two things, you keep an open mind and you immerse yourself in that environment, right? And immersing yourself in that environment looks like watching different videos in YouTube, right? Video one, video two, video three, video four, video five. Just do that. See what comes up after that. Pause and just take some time to yourself and think and it'll come to you. Now, I know this is a soccer podcast. I know this is a coaching podcast, but this is something that I use in my daily life. Again, the idea of law of attraction, manifestation, all that stuff, to me was introduced in a business setting, right? So I use this a lot in my business world, right? When I want something, for example, the whole private school thing, since this is what we're talking about, that didn't happen overnight. I reached out to about 40 different schools before this one finally said yes. We run after school programs. We run lunchtime programs. We are very flexible. But all those things led me into this private school because it was at the forefront of my mind. So for me, this idea is now ingrained in who I am as a person. And anytime I have a challenge in my life, rather than overreact, rather than yelling, rather than this and that and getting upset, it becomes kind of like a game and a new challenge. And if you look at it that way, right? I listened to a podcast um, and he talks about how business is for the rich people. Um, it, it's more of a game, right? And if you take that approach that things are more of a game and your job is to figure out a way to solve the problem rather than, oh, why is this happening to me, right? All these negative thoughts, which if you're negative about something, there is no chance you're going to be able to solve it. You're not in the right headspace. So this law of attraction is really the philosophy, the ideology, the the fact that as long as you keep it at the front of your mind, you will start to notice it. And eventually, if you do it for long enough, then you will find a solution to the problem because it's out there in the world, right? It's out there. And even if it's not out there, by being in an environment where you can see what's going on and seeing what's going wrong, then you yourself can figure it out just by keeping it there. What's wrong with this? Okay, how do I change that? Okay, that's not what I want specifically. Okay, what else can I do? All these different things will lead you to solving that problem. Just before I go... um, I did want to say that I'm very worried about Canada soccer. The fact that John Herdman has left, who is the reason we are where we are uh, in the world of soccer. He's just been probably the best thing that's ever happened to Canada soccer. And I've spoken about that in the past. Uh, And after he left the women's program, you know, uh, we saw what happened in this World Cup. Now, some will say, oh, Saga, they won the Olympics. No, John built that team and... uh, Once he left, those players were at their peak. Uh, And now we can see what happens when he left. You know, the new coach struggled with bringing in new players, uh, keeping the old players, not knowing what their role was and all that. So uh, Canada Canada soccer is in trouble. Um, And I think we might have seen the golden years. Who knows? I mean, we'll have to see who they appoint. I'm cautiously optimistic uh it's very hard to do what he did so whoever's up for the job next uh, uh with the mess that is canada soccer they've got a, a, a lot a lot to live up to so um yeah that's that's where we are in- hey thanks for watching all the way to the end and you can check out more of our videos right here
And if you haven't done so already, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit the like button and the subscribe button.